tidal tempest opens with this volcano panorama to soak in, so take a deep breath before the plunge into this cavern. Cause in this track, even the water droplet sounds contribute to the harmony, setting up the 1 to 7 chords of section A. Section A's progression carries us into the tide with prime examples of ninth chords. So far, we've built chords by starting at the root and skipping every other note in the scale. But there's nothing to stop you from stacking it even higher, and next up in the sequence is the ninth. Sky Sanctuarians know that when you reach the eight, that's the octave where the scale starts over again so we can also think of it as the one. So it follows that the nine can also be thought of as the two, and you can hear it right next to the one, wanting to resolve to the tonic, but staying just out of reach. We notate it on the chord with a nine like an exponent. Next up in the progression is also a ninth chord, but shift it down a step to build it on the seven. These dense chords generate a misty haze in this watery labyrinth. Tim Fallon's soundtrack for Time Tracks goes to town with a suave ninth chord in the Mission Briefing song. See if you can single out the sound of the two during this ninth chord. It's too bad the game never came out, but Sonic CD did, and when Tidal Tempest's lead melody comes in over these ninth chords, you can see it uses the two as a focal point. Notice that each measure only has two or three notes total. Unlike Collision Chaos's more active, melodic ricochets, these slower underwater physics restrain Sonic's maneuverability, so every move counts. And isn't it strange that this first phrase ends on the one, but it doesn't feel like home base? Probably because the consistent ninth chord shape primes our ear to experience the note through the prism of it being adjacent to the chord's root. For two variations on this phrase, the first dives downward with the next climbing back up. This sequence of down then up is in the level design too, cause act one hides all of its past signs underwater. So you have to navigate the tides before heading back up to the time travel runway above the surface. As much as you'd prefer to hydro city your way through up in the open air, Sonic CD requires you to reckon with this zone's oceanic forces. And Triple Trouble 16 bits tidal plant zone knows where it stands in the compendium of Mobius underwater deep dives. So much so that more than a minute into Act 2, it switches out of the existing rhythm completely, launching into a tempestral homage to the title OG. Which is especially apropos, since the song's main melody also centers itself on the two. Chords throughout each section of Tidal Tempest run the full gamut of emotions and discoveries, and it's wild how the root of each chord gradually descends down toward the ocean floor. You can see how it lingers on the sixth chord, built on F, by giving us three variations, with the undertow pulling individual notes down one at a time. and after diving even lower, it springs up for a Picardy third to celebrate not drowning. <music> and 
and the final chord change at the song's loop flows with a familiar labyrinthian motion. Sonic 1's watery maze ended with the right next door motion of the 7 to 1, since the 7 chord is immediately to the left of home base in the scale. The open air activity of Hydrosity provides more room to justify the 5 to 1 chords in the finale of that track, but Tidal Tempest carries echoes of Labyrinth by using the same ending chords but with the tonic converted to minor. Time to break the surface with a time travel charge on call, picking off badniks in this runway on your path toward prehistory. When traveling from present to past, the water level drops, cause Eggman's pollution hasn't yet melted as many ice caps back in this ancient era. To reflect this, those chords stacked high to the nines are pared down to remove that nine at the top, so this results in a seventh chord instead and it continues Collision Chaos' method of dismantling the composition to its constituent parts, even going so far as to arpeggiate the chords, spreading out the tones on the walls of this massive subterranean cave. In the same way the second zone flattened out the bass in section B, Tidal Tempest bass gets the same leveled out thump. The volume of these steady 16th notes uses the swell technique, when an instrument gets a gradual increase in force and loudness, which then gradually subsides. Long before playing Sonic CD, listening to these swells created mental imagery of sneaking around a hallway, scoping out security drones patrolling the corridors, and listening for the whirring sound of their propellers. So imagine my surprise to find Tidal Tempest straightaways patrolled by these drone insect badniks. Be on the lookout for them during this sequence of springs, because if you rush it, they might steal your ticket to the special stage. In which case, you may need to head back down underwater to build your ring count back up. But exercise responsible air management, because we all know the panic of waiting for a lifeline, to the sounds of these rolled chords, which we don't so much hear as a quickly moving chord progression. Instead, they quickly spill out in continuous bursts, like clusters of bubbles. It's a good thing this game doesn't have a drowning theme to interrupt the music. And if you manage to escape up at the surface, the dance is done, and Mother Nature has nothing left to throw at you. All the instruments go quiet, except the percussion rhythms, your last bit of energy after that perilous flirtation with a watery fate. The legacy of this aquatic cha-cha-cha lives on in Sonic Chronicles on DS, where the composition was remixed in the level for... Metropolis Ground Zero? I just... And with all the audio fidelity of a bargain bin MIDI. But cool kids know how to time their moment of travel just after taking out the generator. And by the game's third zone, Sonic's already been through the massive party of palm tree panic and the culture shock ecstasy of collision chaos. So although the modern stainless steel of Tidal Tempest's good future is somewhat jarring at first, what matters is that plant life can flourish with a clean water supply. Sonic takes it in stride with this laid back minor keyed hip hop beat. He's starting to get the hang of this whole good future thing. The 
The good future includes these airy tones that reinforce the top notes on the upper extension of each ninth chord, now with the water at its highest level yet. The song's still in minor, but this sequence takes advantage of the major third between the top two tones. Oh, you need motivation to secure this good future? Well remember, just around the temporal corner is the bad future's pink water, and one glimpse is enough to trigger bad memories of chemical plant. Each Tidal Tempest era till now has been in the key of A, and at first, the bad future seems to be the same, hammering the A and that stern sounding note just a minor second above it. But it's all a poisonous misdirect, landing us neck deep in the pink stinky drink. Cause when the lead melody starts up, the whole thing's shifted up to E instead, the surprise new tonic home bass. You can still hear the melody played on the original lower tonic of A, but it sounds like a defeated choir humming their final tune. That history is getting buried in the toxic flood. Any doubt about the new tonic of E is drowned out in the finale section with these chromatic tumbles from the new home bass. That chromatic synth line is one of a few examples of this track's parallel fifths, where each pair of notes moves in tandem, exactly a fifth apart at all times. Played in pairs. These were a bit of a no-no in Beethoven's time, but they're a hell yes in the Streets of Rage Genesis take on house music. grooves of Tidal Tempest Parallel Fifths to shake off the poison sludge. Cause Robotnik's laughing all the way to the boss arena. These notes taunt the player in this nightmarish maze. And there's Robotnik giggling in the cockpit, letting you catch up just to dash away right at the last second. but all tunnels lead to the boss, one of the best in the series. It's the Mechasonic Balloon Exhibit plus the quad laser from the first game's final boss. And check out Eggman, looking like Jim Carrey more than 20 years before movie one. Now is it just Tales, or does the American soundtrack's Bad Future song sound like it could have been for the good future instead? Cause section B has an aura of futuristic possibilities. The rim shots on the snare keep the tempo, with the vocalist group breathing on each downbeat. And that might be a Dorian Vamp we just heard, four major triad and all. It's moments like these where the US bad futures still can have glimmers of hope, like the battle's not quite over yet. You're just stranded for the moment in this alternate timeline. And with a rather neutral buildup in the first section, which uses those same chord roots but on the lower tonic of E. And this time the four chord isn't quite as definitively major or minor. So between this and the wacky luau in the Pacific, these American bad futures still provide a lifeline to rally when it counts. And then meanwhile, the US good future finds a way to turn a pentatonic walkdown into a tired joke. Where are we right now? Two player Emerald Hill? There is a rockin' guitar solo in section B. But even then, you can imagine Scratch and Grounder on guitar and drums. Mm -hmm. 
but the present track gives the pentatonic walkdown the royal treatment, a melody line that transcends time and continent. In fact, the whole song is a protracted Andalusian cadence, that progression that tends to drift in when H2O is in the mix. Section A delays that 5 chord for a good while, so the 5 chord takes Section B all for itself. All told, Tidal Tempest had its work cut out for it because Labyrinth Zone was hardly a fan-favorite level, but CD reinvented it with style and majesty, and both soundtracks sealed the deal. No wonder it was depicted in a major motion picture in the 2020s. As with other Sonic series masterworks of aquatic composition, the journey through Tidal Tempest's music is a gradually unraveling mystery, concluding with the bittersweet solace of the ninth chord at the song's loop. Fall into it and soak in the gradual descent into the ocean's depths. <laughs> 